Good morning, friends, and welcome to this, our worship e-service today. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us as we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ in this time of worship together. Friends, as we begin our time of worship, I want to invite you to lift up your hearts and your voices to God as we start our service by singing, My Redeemer Lives. Let us worship God, friends. Friends, welcome again to this uh, worship e-service today. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us as we gather in community with one another in the spaces and places we find ourselves through this e-service today. Welcome. Friends, if you're new and you're not quite sure who I am, my name is Raymond. I'm a Methodist minister serving in the Mahale Circuit of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And I want to invite you to participate in this our worship e-service today as you feel comfortable. Welcome, friends. As has become our custom in our e-services, we light a candle together. Now, if you have a candle nearby and you want to light it with me, I want to invite you to do so safely. As uh, we light our candles, it's a reminder that Christ is with us. That the light of Christ shines into the moments and situations in which we find ourselves. And that where we are becomes a sanctuary because God is with us as we gather in this space as well. So I want to invite you to light your candle and to do so safely as we light and a reminder that the light of Christ shines into the darkness of our worlds in this moment in time. With that said, we come to a time of opening prayer, friends, and I want to invite you to lift up your prayers to God as we gather around and worship the Word of God and in prayer today. Let us lift up our prayers to God as we come as the children of God. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we come to you in this moment and we thank you that you are with us that you continue to journey with us in every moment and every situation, and that your light shines into every moment and situation as well. And as we come as we are, as your children, we come and we, we just ask that you be with us, Almighty God. 
Friends, I want to invite you in the moment of quiet to lift up your prayers, whatever they may be, to God now. So, Father, we thank you that you hear these, our prayers. That as we lift them up to you, that you, Father, answer them according to your will and purpose. As we've looked at our prayers of confession for the sins we've committed, we find your peace and your restoration, your healing and the the words of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. As we've lifted up prayers, Father, of thanksgiving and adoration for what you've done and continue to do in our lives, we thank you that you are the one who is the source of our strength in our lives. As we've lifted our prayers for others and and for ourselves, Father, that you would answer them according to your will and your purpose. So, Father, we thank you that you hear all of these our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And I hear you saying, and also with you, Raymond. Friends, as we pass the peace of the, of the Lord to each other, the peace of Christ that transcends all understanding to each other, I ask that you also commit to becoming a peacemaker in the spaces and places you find yourselves at this time. So friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's just share the peace perhaps on the description of this our video, on our WhatsApp chat groups, on, on the various other platforms that we have to share with each other in this moment as we pass the peace to one another. And as we do so as well, we can, we can combine ourselves and commit ourselves into community with one another. With that, we say our community prayer as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm going to pray in English, and I want to invite you to pray whichever language is easiest upon your tongue at this time. So let's pray the Lord's Prayer together as we close this time of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we continue to worship today, we we lift up our voices and our hearts to God as we sing together in the beauty of holiness. Let us worship God, friends.
my heart and my spirit soul, and I wish I could love you more, my God and my Friends, as we worship God today in community with one another, we also come bringing the world to God in prayer. So I want to invite you in this moment to bring your prayers for others, perhaps family, friends, community to God as we lift up our prayers of intercession, our our prayers for others in this moment. I'm going to open us at the time of prayer and I'm going to leave a moment of quiet for you to lift up your prayers. Perhaps as for the COVID-19 pandemic, perhaps people have been... uh, who are grieving the loss of a loved one, both through COVID-19 and other natural causes or other causes, perhaps those who are ill and frail, perhaps those who are economically impacted in this current time, perhaps there are various other requests that we need to lift up to God as well. So let us lift up our prayers. Father, we come to you as your children in this time of, of prayer today. As we lift up our prayers for others, Father, we we lift up the world to you and we invite you into that space to to bring your healing, your transforming and your work as only you can, almighty God. Friends, I invite you to lift up your prayers to God now as we lift up our prayers for others. So, Father, we thank you that you hear these our prayers. You know the, the people and the circumstances better than we do. The number of hair upon the people's heads and the, the intricacy of the circumstances and situations that they face. So, Father, we thank you that you hear these our prayers as we pray for others. And we ask that you, Father, would continue to journey with us as we seek to be your people. Using us as an answer to prayer as we seek to reach out and love. To bring healing and transformation to the world around us as well. And friends, I want to invite you to to stop for a minute and then perhaps there's there's prayers that you want to lift for things that you need from God. Lift up your prayers to God now. Father, we thank you that you hear these our prayers and that you answer them according to your will and your purpose. For we ask this all in your precious name, Jesus, the God who answers prayers and continues to journey with us now and always. Amen. Friends, as we come to our notices today, our notices have been made available through our WhatsApp info groups on our Facebook pages and also as the description of this video today. I want to commend them to your reading so that you're aware of what's taking place in our communities of faith at this time. There are three that I'd like to highlight for your attention today. The first is our confirmation class. I'm in the process of putting together a confirmation class for 2021 for the English societies in the Mahale circuit. That would be Krugersdorp Methodist Church, Princess Methodist Church and Nuitevel Methodist Church. And I want to invite you, if you're looking to, to be confirmed, to reach out to me, you've got my contact details, to be able to set up and obviously make uh, you part of that class. The way I envisage it happening this year is obviously both in person and having hybrid sessions. So some in-person sessions and some hybrid sessions as we meet together. In order to set this all up, I'm calling an information meeting on the 19th of September at Newt Hevel Methodist Church at 11 o'clock. That'll be after our 9.30 service at Newt Hevel Methodist Church. And I want to invite you to come with your parents in order to set up uh, what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be doing it, so that we can put together our 2021 confirmation class. The second note just from my side is that on Sunday, the 26th of September, we'll be having a Harvest Thanksgiving Sunday celebration service at all of our English services. 
This means that we'll be taking time in our Sunday worship services to give thanks to God for all that God has done for us over the past year. As part of the Thanksgiving time the, and, and part of our service, we will be presenting a harvest offering to God of, of non-perishable food, well, foodstuffs. So I'm inviting you to please bring some non-perishable foodstuffs to the service. If you're joining us for our e-services, perhaps during the week leading up to our service, uh, drop off some non-perishable foodstuffs at our church site that we can bring into our in-person worship services as well. This, the, these non-perishable foodstuffs will then be used to build up our church site pantries to assist families and com in our, our faith communities and the broader communities who are in need at this time. So that's the two. The third notice is, friends, we're continuing with our membership information update drive. I just I would like to encourage you, if you have not yet completed one of our membership update forms, to please do so and get it back to us so that we can have accurate information in our databases to better be able to care for you and also so we can become poppy compliant in all of our information storage and information gathering as well. So friends, with that, I want to commend the rest of our reading uh, notices to your reading. Uh, so that you're aware of what's taking place in our communities of faith at this time. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank those who continue to give so generously into the life of our communities of faith at this time. Thank you. Friends, as you give of your tithes and offerings to God, we as the church receive it, and we use it for the sustaining of the kingdom of God. Firstly, through sustaining our church sites and the ministry as we care for our communities and grow in faith as we preach the gospel of Christ but also beyond that in mission as we reach out to the world around us to bring healing and transformation to the world around us at this time. With that, we come to a moment of commending our giving and our, our business to God as well. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that as we come, you are with us. As we journey through life, you go with us in the spaces and places. And we thank you for that, that you are a God who is with us, journeys with us, transforms and heals us continues to journey in the spaces and strengthening us for when we need strength for the journey as well. Father, we thank you that, that you are able to receive our tithes and offerings, that as we give them to you, you receive them and you use them through your church for the sustaining of your kingdom, through reaching out to the world in, that is in such need at this moment for the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord, but also to sustain the work of our church communities and our faith, to, to pay the bills and to sustain the work in this moment. So, Father, we thank you that you receive our giving, and that you use it for the furtherment of your kingdom. Give those who administer it wisdom to be able to meet the needs that need to be met. Father, for we ask this in your precious name. And we thank you that you bless those who give. Continue to bless us, we pray. Give us wisdom as we seek to be your church in this time, your body. Help us to reach out and bring healing and transformation. For we ask this all in your name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. Friends, as we continue to worship God today, we, we sing together great in power. And I want to invite you to lift up your hearts as we prepare to receive the word of God. Let us prepare our hearts through song. Let us worship God, friends.
Friends, when was the last time you stopped and looked at the sky? I, I, I mean, really stopped and spent time looking at the sky. Now, I remember when I was a bit younger than I am now, spending hours staring into the sky. As I, as I was at school, on the sports field, perhaps with friends at lunchtime, or even after school sometimes, uh, after sports, just sitting there chatting with my friends. We would sit on the grass fields, we'd lie on our backs, and we'd stare in the sky, and we would take a look at the clouds and the animals, the birds, and those that were flying through the sky. We'd spend time seeing, seeing God's masterpiece and God's handiwork, His creativity in the sky finding art in the sky by, by looking at the clouds and, and seeing people and animals that, that God had fashioned into those spaces of clouds. Seeing the sunrise and the sunset, seeing God's fingerprints and, and handiwork in the unique colors and beauty of a sunrise or sunset. Those unique pastel colors that we see and get to enjoy each day as it is a gift from God to us. We even learn from the, the sunset and sunrise what, what the weather will be doing in the day that lies ahead. I'm, I'm sure you've all heard the saying, red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. It's even biblical. We read in Matthew 16, verses 2 and 3, when, when Jesus says, you know the saying, red sky at night means fair weather tomorrow. And red sky in the morning means foul weather all day. Then I remember when I was a little bit older, going to scouts and being taught how to navigate by using the stars. Like travelers of old and in the time before portable compasses and even GPS devices or our Google Maps that we have today. Using Orion's Belt and the Southern Cross to find north and then from there find my bearings so that I'm able to navigate by the stars. Friends, today unfortunately we have so much light pollution at night. That in some places we are unable to see the full magnitude and splendor of the stars that surround us in the night skies. Smog in other spaces cloud out those the stars from our, our sight as well. And we don't see the skies as clearly as we did in the past. For me, my, one of my favorite spots for, for seeing the stars is actually in the middle of the Karoo. And I often do many long distance endurance cycle events in that area. One of the reasons is to actually stop in that space of cycling in the early hours of the morning or late at night and to actually look up at the sky, to see the multiplicity of stars, the, the galaxies, the, the Milky Way that you can almost feel as if you can reach up and touch. I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about as we see those, those millions and millions of stars that are very visible in those spaces. So friends, as we continue through this season of spring, we, we're, going to, we're continuing to look at the season of creation. This Sunday, we're focusing on Sky Sunday, and we're going to be looking at the theme of dominion and exploitation through exploring what we can learn about God's dominion from Psalm 119. So friends, what can we learn about dominion from God? Many of us pray on a, on a daily basis and many occasions the Lord's Prayer. And as we, we pray the Lord's Prayer, we, we pray these parts. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we even close off the Lord's Prayer with, with yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm sure you, you recognize those words, friends. But I think at times many of us mindlessly say these words without actually understanding the deep significance of what we are actually saying through those words. Through these words, we're, we're actually asking God to come and have dominion, to come and, and to take control, to, to be in charge, that we embrace the reality of who God is and that we invite God into our daily living and our, into our daily being, that we surrender ourselves to God's will, into God's dominion and place God's will above our own will. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now with, with that said, friends, I want to dive into to what King David shares with us as he, he writes Psalm 119 and the understanding of, of the greatness of who God is. And we read these words, friends. I want to invite you to follow with me as we share these words. Just read on the screen as I've put the words up. 
The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They they use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. Friends, what David is saying is that if we are to stop and look at the sky, we cannot but see the glory and control, the dominion of God. No matter who you are or where you are, the sky speaks of it and points to God. And everyone understands. That's what, what King David shares with us as we read these first four verses of Psalm 19. But God has dominion over sky, over day and night. Friends, in, in Genesis 1, we, we read in verses 3 to 5, Then God commanded, Let there be light, and light appeared. God was pleased with what he saw. Then he separated the light from the darkness, and he named the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. That was the first day. And then from verse 6 to 7, Then God commanded, Let there be a dome to divide the waters and to keep it. Two separate places. And it was done. So God made a dome to separate the waters under from the waters above. He named the dome sky. Evening passed and morning came. That was the second day. Friends, we we know the creation account of how God made the first and second days. It shows us that God has dominion over creation, including the sun and, and the moon over day and night. I mean, we we read in Psalm 147, verse 4, He determines the number of stars. He gives them all their names. Friends, can you imagine staring up at one of those those clear nights without light pollution? And the millions and millions of stars that, that we get to enjoy in that moment. God has determined the number of stars. God has, God gives all of them their name. Then in in Job 9, 9, we read, God hung the stars in the sky, the Dipper, Orion, the Pallades, and the stars of the south. Friends, we see God's presence through God's craftsmanship in the sky. A message telling us of God's existence, God's power, love, and care. Friends, we, we look through the Bible, we see the many ways in which God has spoken through the sky. I mean, we, we start in Genesis 9 through, through the rainbow serving as a sign of covenant between God and all of humanity. Then through, through angels in the sky, through the, the stars announcing Jesus' birth, announcing that God is with us, Emmanuel. Heavens torn apart at, at Jesus' baptism and, and the Holy Spirit descending and the voice of God speaking. And even through the darkness at, at the death of Jesus on the cross. But yet some people believe that everything just just happened and, and the universe just came together with a big bang by chance. But friends, looking at the complexity, design and orderliness of the universe, we're appointed to create it. Just stop for a moment and look at the sky and, and the creation of the stars and the orderliness of them. It's not just by chance that they're there. It's by a creator who is personally involved in creation. God's fingerprints are everywhere, including inside each of us. God's dominion on display. God has used God's dominion, power and control to bring life and sustain life. Friends, I believe that God is speaking to us through the sky. But but are we willing to listen? Are we willing to pay attention? Are we willing to submit to God's dominion over us? Friends, we, we tend to find ourselves closed off from the sky. I mean, we, we spend large amounts of time indoors, perhaps too much time indoors. And when we're outdoors, we, we're so focused on looking down at our cell phones and, and other things instead of looking up and enjoying what God has made. Friends, with the, the greatness of God being revealed through creation, God's glory and control, God being in control, God made us to know this. And us being made in the image of God. We too have the ability and power of dominion, of control. 
We see this all around us. People using their power and control. Dominion over others, over creation in poor, destructive ways. Leading to death and destruction and not life and prosperity. Friends, we we call this sin-sick dominion or domination exploitation. The the human condition is is good at exploiting and misusing what God has created through sin, through creating, through creation, as, as well as through the way we treat each other as well. But friends, David challenges us in our closing words from Psalm 19. In verse 14, we, we read the following words. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart Be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Friends, there's there's moments in which this is a challenge for us because I believe it calls us to examine our use of power and control. What What are our words towards others showing our control over the world around us? What are our meditation and our heart's meditations towards the way we treat the creation and those around us that God has created as well. Perhaps it it asks us to ask the question, are we using our words and our meditation of our heart to bring life, health and prosperity to the world around us? Or are we we making it a better place for all of creation? Or or are we bringing death and destruction, destroying what God has made to, to satisfy our own greeds and our own wants? Friends, we're, we're invited into a season of creation this spring, of partnering with, with God in the care and use of dominion over creation. The question we need to deeply wrestle with is, is how am I doing in using my power and control? In other words, my dominion over creation. Am I partnering with God to bring life or am I exploiting it through sin, bringing destruction and death? My friends, as I, as I close today, I want to invite you this week to make time to spend with God. And as you do, go outside. Hopefully you choose a sunny day this week and you look up at the sky. Perhaps take a mat or a blanket with you and lie on your back and look at the sky as you spend time with God. Take time to, to see the creation, the, the sky that God has made. Stop and be present in the moment. And be still and silent in that moment and just reflect on the beauty that God has made around us. Perhaps use this moment as a prayer. Opening and say, Father, I'm here to chat with you. I want to be in the space with you. And then be silent, be present in that moment as you marvel at the creation that God has made. And then close that off with a, with a prayer. Amen. Perhaps we need to stop and thank God for God's good creation and our privilege in partnering with God in God's dominion, love and care for creation and all that God has made. With that, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, as we come to you, we thank you that you are a God of love, care and creation. You're a God of who is in control. And we pray, Father, your dominion, your control, And your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. And help us to be part of that. To to care for the the creation and partner with you in caring for the world around us. To actually stop and and to enjoy the world that you have made. And you've given us each day as a gift. The signs in the sky, the, the clouds and the sunrise and the sunset. Indicating that you are there with us, almighty God. Strengthen us, we pray, to enjoy this. know To know what to do with it. For we ask this in your name, Jesus now and always. Amen. Friends, as we respond to the word of God today, we we sing together, all heaven declares. And I want to invite you to worship God. Lift up your hearts and your lives to God as we respond to the word of God now. Let us praise God, friends. Oh, yeah.
Friends, as we come to an end of our time of e-service today, thank you for joining us. I'm glad that you've been here and that you've journeyed with us through this our e-service. And I look forward to journeying with you next week as we gather together in community with one another, both through our e-services as well as through our in-person worship services. So friends, have a blessed week. Just a reminder that if you have any pastoral care needs, I am here for you. Simply reach out to me and I'll be able to care for you as we, are, we set up a meeting or some sort of engagement in that space to be able to care for you partially. But friends, have a blessed week. And as we close our time, we, we bless each other with what's known as the benediction. I want to encourage you to say with me, the words are now on the screen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Friends, be blessed, stay safe and know that God is with you now and always. Amen.